Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Manager Weekly. My name is Reese. Coming up in today's show, I run through my 10 best players to target, including captains, for double game week 35, with three bonus ones thrown in there as well for you. Every player on this list is there on merit. It is driven by data. Expected goals conceded by their opponents and expected goal involvement per 90 by the player, both over the season and over the last five games. That's where the majority of this data has come from. Please do hit the like button if at any point you do like the video today. Liking the videos really helps me out and also lets me know that you actually like them so I can make more. Please consider subscribing if you're new. Now, if you have a look at Ben Krellin's fixed schedule for 35, you will note that Liverpool are very likely to have a double game week this week, which feature Southampton and West Brom. That is the standout fixture this week if you look at the data. Liverpool are very good at scoring goals or almost scoring goals essentially. They're very good with expected goals and Southampton and West Brom are both very near the bottom of the table when you look at expected goals conceded over the last five and over the season. Southampton's expected goals against per 90 minutes over the season is coming about 1.3 and that's almost exactly the same as their figure for the same statistic over the last five. West Brom are 1.7 over the season and also 1.7 over the last five. They're the worst team in the league over the season, but they've got a bit better lately, or essentially other teams have got worse basically over the last five. The data suggests the two next best fixtures to target are Everton's fixture against West Ham and Aston Villa. Again, West Ham and Aston Villa coming near the bottom in terms of expected goals conceded over the season and over the last five. West Ham over the season have got an expected goals against per 90 figure of 1.2 goals conceded per game. But that has dropped off a cliff lately and in the last five it's gone up to 1.8. Everton's second game against Aston Villa, they've got a 1.2 expected goals conceded per 90 over the season. Which is quite good because their defence was quite good during the start of the season. But again they've got a lot worse lately. Now up to a figure of 1.6 goals conceded over the last five. Crystal Palace's double game week featuring Sheffield United and Southampton is also obviously a very very good one for their attack but unfortunately Crystal Palace haven't got the best attack. They play Sheffield United which are one of the worst teams in the league in terms of conceding expected goals 1.7 over the season and two expected goals conceded over the last five per 90 minutes and then they face Southampton who've got an expected goals against figure per 90 of 1.3 over the last five and over the season. So if you average all those numbers out, that means Crystal Palace's opponents this weekend have an average expected goals per 90 minutes of 1.575. Liverpool, an average non-penalty expected goals per 90 minutes, 1.5 conceded. And Everton's opponents have conceded 1.4 five goals on average non-penalty per 90 minutes. So with that in mind I've done the same thing with player data and I've searched for all the players in these three fixtures, looked at their non-penalty expected goal involvement over the season and over the last five, averaged those two figures out and then also averaged that figure with the figure of their opponents expected goals against to come up with my top 10 plus three captain slash players to transfer in this week but with all that data in mind top of the list is Sadio Mane now Sadio Mane's non-penalty goal involvement per 90 minutes over the season is 0.68 over the last five that's 0.96 the highest of any player in any of these three fixtures average those two figures out and that's a figure of 0.82 again the highest of any of the players in these two fixtures and if you average that out with their opponents non-penalty goals against per 90 minutes that gives you a figure of 1.16 which is the highest figure again of any player on our list today so Sadio Mane comes in on top next up is no surprises Mohamed Salah and bear in mind all of these figures I'm going through today all this data is non-penalty data so it's worth bearing in mind that Mo Salah has obviously got the penalties. Mo Salah's non-penalty goal involvement per 90 minutes 0.6 over the season over the last five that's 0.94 so just behind Mane averaged out that gives you a figure of 0.77 and average that out against the figure for their opponents 1.5 gives you 1.135 which is the second highest figure of any player in these three fixtures. Next up, Diogo Jota. 
Jacob Jota's non-penalty goal involvement per 90 minutes over the season is 0.66. Over the last five, that's 0.75, and averaged out, that gives you a figure of 0.705. That figure averaged out with their opponent's average goals conceded per 90 minutes gives you a figure of 1.1025. So as Jota comes in at number three. The caveat with Jota is obviously minutes. I think Salah and Mane, for me, just going off my own intuition, will play both games. Jota, I think, is more likely to be benched for at least one of them, but we know he does come off the bench and do well, so I'm still happy putting him in at number three. Number four, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Over the season, he's got a non-penalty goal involvement of 0.66. Over the last five, that is 0.6. Averaged out, that gives you 0.63, and averaged out with their opponents for the weekend, that gives you a figure of 1.04. I know what it's like to own Everton strikers. I've owned two for the past couple of weeks, and it is a frustrating own. But the numbers here are telling us that DCL is arguably the fourth best transfer target or captain for Game Week 35. Number five is Roberto Firmino, which is a bit of a surprising one, but the data here tells us that over the season, he's got a non-penalty goal involvement of 0.56. Over the last 90, that drops to 0.41. Averaged out, that gives you 0.485. Averaged out with their opponents, average non-penalty goals against per 90 minutes gives you a figure of 0.9925 that puts him in at number 5 on our list today. Now again with Jota, I would maybe expect Firmino to sit one of these games out. For me, that would make me very reticent to captain him. Also, not a lot of people have got Firmino in their teams, surely. Which could be a good thing if you're looking for a differential, but it's probably a bad thing because you're not going to bring him in. Next up, number six, is Christian Benteke. 0.37 goal involvement per 90 minutes over the season, which drops slightly to 0.32 per 90 minutes over the last five. Averaged out, that's 0.345. Averaged out with their opponent's average non-penalty goals against figure for the season, which is 1.575. That gives you a figure of 0.96, which comes in just behind Roberto Firmino. Richarlison next, and oh, I've owned this guy for far too long now, six or seven weeks. Such a frustrating own, but the data tells us that points are coming for Richarlison. Non-penalty goal involvement over the season of 0.44 per 90 minutes. That goes up to 0.49 over the last five. I mean, I where are those points coming from, Richarlison? Where are they? Averaged out, that is a figure of 0.465, and that averaged out with their opponents, Non-penalty goals conceded, expected per 90 minutes, gives you a figure of 0 0.9575. So apparently Richarlison comes in at number 7. Number 8 is Wilfred Zaha. 0 0.39 goal involvements per 90 minutes over the season. Drops to 0 0.21 over the last 5. That averaged out as 0 0.3 and averaged out with their opponent's figure of ex non-penalty expected goals conceded per 90 minutes is 0.9375. Jay Rodriguez next, who's someone I would worry a little bit about minutes. Uh, constantly injured, getting knocks for some reason or another. But 0.44 goal involvement over the season, that's 0.4 over the last five. Averaged out 0.42 and averaged out with their opponents. Non-penalty, expected goals against figure per 90. Average is 0.935. So that's your top 10. Three bonus players then, two defenders and a midfielder. Can you guess who they are going to be? Lucas Dinia comes in at number 11 on the list. 0.25 non-penalty expected goal involvement over the season, which is good for a defender, obviously, and that is 0.32 over the last five. Averaged out, that's 0.285, and averaged out with their opponent's goals conceded figure is 0.93, which for a defender is pretty good that he's coming in there at number 11 because obviously you've got the chance of clean sheets on top of that. Next up, Trent. Trent, non-penalty goal involvement over the season of 0 0.3. That goes up over the last five to 0 0.37. That's more than Dinya. Averaged out, that's 0 0.335. Averaged out against their opponent's figure, which is 1.5, gives you 0 0.9175. So it could be a cheeky differential for anyone who's willing to gamble on that Liverpool defence. Thinking about it myself, thinking about it a little bit, he's someone who I own, so 
I mean, I need to make up a lot of ground. Last on our list today is someone who's been talked about in the FPL community quite a bit over the past week or so, and that is Gilfie Sigurdsson. Now, he is on penalties. And as far as I can tell, he's the only other player who's on penalties in this list. Milivojevic, I think, takes penalties for Crystal Palace, but let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong about that. 0.35 goal involvement over the season per 90 minutes and expected goal involvement, that is. And don't forget, all this data is expected data. Non-penalty expected goal involvement over the last five, 0.34. So very similar, and that averages out to 0.34.5. Average that with their opponent's figure gives him a figure of 0 0.8975. Will he start both games? I don't know. It looks like he's coming back into the team. He looks like he's a bit more important to uh, Carlo Ancelotti lately. He's got the penalties as well, so it might be something we're thinking about. Guys, that's the video for today. Thank you very much for watching. Do smash that like button if at any point you have appreciated the video and hit subscribe if you're new. Liking the videos really helps me out and also lets me know that you actually like them so then I can make more of them if you do like them, if that makes sense. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.